Making VR games is already a tough task, and making them multiplayer, it's even harder. That's why I'm making this series so that you can learn how to make proper VR multiplayer games. Last episode, I showed you how to do the basic setup and how to get people connected to the same room. In this one, we're going to take things a bit further. So in the last video, we added in this XR rig and this real-time VR player, which allow you and anyone you send your built file to, your built APK, it allows them to connect to your game and, and play with you. But right now, there isn't really a game. You're sort of just standing in one spot and waving your arms around. It's not ideal. So for this video, we're just going to add in simple teleportation to places that you specified. To start with, we need to add in a locum a locomotion system, if I can spell it right, and a teleportation provider, which gives you the tools you need to be to allow your XR rig to teleport. And then make sure that in your left hand controller and right hand controller, you have an XR ray interactor, line renderer, and XR interactor line visual. These are probably already in there if you followed my last tutorial, but just to make sure, make sure they're there, otherwise this won't work. So next up, we're going to add in some places for your character to be able to teleport to. So we're going to add in both a teleportation area and a teleportation anchor. And just preset the position on both of these. Okay, so and I've just spread them out to make it a bit more easier to see what's going on. The teleportation area allows you to teleport to anywhere within the square. You can you pull the trigger on your controller and you'll you'll teleport to any point within that grid. The teleportation anchor, however, has a child component of an anchor, and the location of the anchor is the place within the grid you teleport to. So you can obviously move this around within the grid, like you can see me doing. And whenever you try and teleport to this square, it will take you to the anchor rather than to wherever you want on the grid. Uh, I'm just going to quickly create a material and add it to these things so we can tell the difference. Call this one blue. Just stupid and call this one red. Should probably make this capital, but it's fine. And we'll just apply the blue to the area and red to the anchor. Now, as you can see, we're in here, we have our two red lines coming out, which we had at the end of the last time. And when we point anywhere within here, we teleport directly to the point within the blue square. But if we go to the red square, we go to this specified point here, no matter where I point. So I can try and teleport over here, it doesn't happen. But if I go over here, we go back, try and go over here, I'm going to land over there. See? So one thing you probably notice while playing other VR games is that when they have these teleportation systems, it's not a direct straight line. You generally it's a curve which you which points somewhere. So we're gonna we're gonna just quickly change it to that within our within our game here. And to do that, we just go down to in both the left and right hand controller, we go to here where it says Raycast configuration, and we just go in here and we pick either projectile or bezier curve. I'm going to pick projectile curve and then within here you can see we've got a bunch of settings which affect the flight and speed of the the arc and how far it's going to go i generally find 16 to be a bit too big but you can test this out yourself but i'm just going to put this down to 10 for now for me the next thing you're probably going to want to add to your teleportation is some way of showing to the player where exactly they're going to be teleporting to rather than just the line. The line's fine, but a lot of games, they use some sort of marker to show where the end of the point is. So we're just going to quickly make an, an object to represent this. And we're just going to make it in, we're just going to make a cylinder. We're going to just sh shrink it down and that should be fine. Um, these things, you probably don't want it to be fully visible so we're going to make ourselves a new material if i can find it which is just going to be uh transparent blue go in here go in blue 
set it to transparent and then also go into this rendering mode and also set it to transparent and just drag it on to the object. And as you can see, that's now a lovely transparent cylinder. Um, and this is going to be the left, the left reticle. And this is going to be the right reticle. Then we're going to go into our left hand controller and you'll notice in here on the XR interactive line visual, it's got this option for a reticle. And for the left controller, we're just going to drag in the left reticle. And for the right controller, we're going to drag in the right reticle. And then another very important thing to do, which I just forgot, is go into the left and right reticle and turn off their colliders. With the colliders on, it looks a bit messy and you're probably going to cause some problems with when people actually view your game. With that now all set up, as you can see, whenever we point anywhere, it shows a nice reticle. And as before, we can teleport directly to it. Same as on here, still to the same spot, which is fine. And over here, you just go to the point and you can see that the reticle shows up. The only problem is right now, the reticle is always there. And that is going to get very distracting if you're, I don't know, if you're playing an FPS game or something like that. It's going to get really annoying. So the next stage of what we're going to want to do is add in a way so that it doesn't show up all the time. And to do this, we're just going to we're going to need to make a script, which I'm going to call. Well, we can put it directly in the XR rig and we're going to call it teleportation. No, let's call it teleport controller. Then we're going to just open it up. Now it's open, we're going to need to set up a few things just so it all works properly. To start with, we're going to need to get access to both our controllers. So we're going to make two public XR controller variables. It's going to be left controller and then right controller. We're also going to, as it says here, the XR controller namespace is not found. So if we just go Alt Enter within Visual Studio or in your tool of choice, you can add in the XR Interaction Toolkit. And if, if you don't have Alt Enter, you can just type that in yourself. We're also going to specify the button we're using for teleportation on each hand, which is just by going to public input helpers dot button. And, and we'll call this teleport ray button. And that is the button we're going to be using for teleporting. And then we also need to add in a variable, which is the how much the button is pressed is pressed before it will activate anything. And we're just going to call this activation threshold. And we'll set that as some small value like 0.2 or something like that. And let's go with 0.1. Um, then we want to also get access to both the reticle and the uh, actual line visual component. So we're going to make a private XR interactor line visual called left ray which is uh probably guess the left ray i'm going to make a private game object which is the left reticle which is the left reticle and then we're just going to duplicate this and we're going to create right ray and right reticle then to start in the start method, we need to add in the references to the left ray, left reticle, right ray, and right reticle. So that's left ray equals not that left controller dot game object. Oh, wait, you know that was right. Game object dot get component uh, xr interactor line visual. And then also left reticle. That was annoying. It was completely left reticle equals left ray dot dot reticle. Okay, so that gives us a reference to both of our 
components for the re left, and then we're just going to get a reference to the right as well, which is just a simple case of changing all of these to say right instead of left. I'm sure there's probably a keyboard shortcut for this, but I don't know what it is, so I'm just going to do it like this. Um, ah, I spelled it wrong up here. Cool. So now this is all set up properly. When the game starts, these will get their references. We just need to specify in the editor, left controller, right controller, and the button, and the activation threshold. And that that's more to change. 0.1 is honestly probably fine, but it's fine to leave it like this. Right now it doesn't do anything though, so we're going to start by making a method to check whether the button is actually pressed. And we're just going to say public all... I wish I could spell today. Public all check if button down, which is a good name, maybe. And that's going to take in an XGAR controller. And it will return a variable called is pressed. And we're going to get that by pass by going through this input helpers class with is pressed and pass into this. As you can see, we need to pass in an XR input device, the button we want to use, what the output variable is going to be, and then an optional value of the float press threshold, which we are going to define. And so this is going to have the controller dot input device, the teleport ray button um, out or is pressed which is our output variable and then our activation threshold and then we're just going to return is pressed this one this so what this method does is this checks to see if the button is down if the button is above this activation threshold it returns the variable is it returns true otherwise it return, returns false and this variable is pressed so we're just going to use that to enable and disable the reticles and the line so we're just going to call left ray dot enabled equals check if button down left controller and left reticle dot set active is going to be check if button down left controller as well um of course doing it like this is a bit strange so we'll just get we're going to ex extra extract it to left is press and write that as that and this is a ball or just a bar if you want it doesn't matter go in here and pass these in instead, just so we're not calling the same function multiple times. And by that I mean, of course, set the whole thing rather than just that little bit. Ah, I forgot that. There you go. And then we just want to copy this and do the exact same for right. And I hope I don't miss anything. And then this. So what this is doing is it's checking if the button is down. It's then if it is. And then based on that, it either enables or disables the left ray. And then sets the reticle to an active or, or active or inactive. And the reason we need to do that reticle one is because I found during testing for making this video, the and also, you know, in the past, that sometimes it wouldn't actually work out properly and the reticle would still be there after you'd set active and you just have this like object underneath you and it, it didn't look very good. So we've added this in just to make sure it all works properly. So now save that, go back to Unity, let it compile everything. So now there's just a few more things we need to get set up before we can test it out, which is we just want to go into the XR rig and in here we want to plug in our left controller, the right controller, and set the button to be the teleport button, which we're currently using as grip. And you can find which button you're using in both these controllers where it's this select usage button. You can set this to whatever you want. I'm going to leave it as grip. It's pretty intuitive, at least in my opinion. And then we also want to set this axis to press threshold higher than the value within the XR rig, which is currently set as one. 
which we set in the script. And that's just so you don't need to, if you don't press it all the way, you don't teleport, basically. So now we're in the scene. You can see that my hands no longer show the grips all the time, the, the lines all the time. And if I hold the grip button and release, it will teleport me to the spot. Same with the other hand. And the line's not there. It appears when I hold it and it disappears when I release. Pretty cool. Same, still all works fine. We can teleport to where we want to, as you can see. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. So now this is all set up. This will all already work in multiplayer. You and a friend or whoever, if you connect to your room with the API you build and send to them, you will both already be able to play together and teleport around this little place. The teleportation already works in multiplayer because it's all just handled by your local client. Next video, I'm going to show you how to pick up and interact with objects within your world as well as how they can be shared across clients so you can play catch or something with a friend. Okay, thanks for watching the video. I really hope it helped you out and it's helping you get closer towards being able to make your own VR game. If you want, please feel free to leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see more. Or leave a comment if there's anything you want to see next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.